Good morning, everybody. I'm Peter Morve, and this is Hetek Word. And our guest for today is Eliyahu Berkowitz from Israel. Good morning, or actually good afternoon, Eliyahu. Good afternoon. It's always great to see you. Good to have you here. Uh, for those viewers uh, who are following our podcast, uh, they can remember you. We have talked about a number of very exciting things, including the red heifers that arrived about two years ago to Israel. But for those viewers who are not really familiar with this topic and what do these holy cows mean for Judaism and Christianity from the biblical perspective, could you just explain it a little bit? Sure. Um, the red heifer is a mitzvah straight from the Torah. Most people are familiar with it. It's from Numbers uh, chapter 19. Um, it talks about a red cow. Um, the Maimonides describes it as the most complicated uh, mitzvah in the Bible. It's what we refer to. There are two kinds of commandments. There's a chok and a mishpat. Mishpat, you can understand. <clears throat> like, don't steal, don't murder. Chok is, you just can't understand it. And this is the archetypal, the, the big hook. We don't understand how it works. It's a red cow. Um, it can have no more, more than one on red hair. It has to be without a blemish, no scars, scratches, anything like that. It can never have had a yoke on it. It cannot have ever have been ridden or used for work. Um, it has to be burned in the, in the Torah. It talks about being burnt outside of the camp uh in these days when the days of the temple it meant um outside of the temple on the mount of olives and uh uh it's it's incredibly rare uh, from the time of moses until the destruction of the temple there were only nine red heifers um the idea is you burn it entirely not on the altar as i said on the mount of olives and you take the ashes and you put a tiny speck of the ashes in living water, in spring water. You take hyssop, which is, I think it's thyme, and you, um, we call it in, in Israel, zatar. And you use the, you sprinkle it, you spritz it, and the drops purify people from the um, most intensive form of ritual impurity, which is proximity coming close to a dead person. Um, and since we haven't had it in 2,000 years, everyone today is considered as if we are ritually impure in that way. So in order to do most of the temple service, we need the ashes of the red heifer. That's if how it is in the Bible. If I, understand, if I understand correctly, now you have five so-called imported cows. Uh, yep. And uh, uh, they they arrived they arrived two years ago. Uh, could you keep them about closer? a year and a half? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's actually a remarkable story because um, the the Temple Institute um, tasked Rav Azaria Ariel with bringing back the red heifer, um, and they're so incredibly rare. Um, it's a cow. the The Torah talks about a cow, a para, um, a calf is up until two years old. So a cow is two years and one month old. And to find a cow that old with no non-red hairs is incredibly rare. So he's been searching and searching. They've tried to find it in Israel. It turns out through this incredible thing where a, a, a rancher in Texas um, took it upon himself to raise red heifers when he was retired. He did it because he was a devout Christian and he read the Bible. Um, and then a little bit after that, um, a gentleman named named Byron Stinson, who was working with rabbis um, in an organization called Bona Israel, he started advertising for red heifers. And this guy answered the, the ad. And there's a problem that when a cow is born, I don't know how it is in Hungary, but in, in, in Israel and in America, as soon as a, a calf is born, they have to get ear numbers. And that puts a hole in the ear. It's a blemish, so it's not kosher. But it just so happens that because of COVID, the guy who was job it is was to put in the ear numbers was quarantined, and he couldn't show up at work. So there were a bunch of cows that didn't get ear numbers. 
And so Byron went to check them out with the rabbis. And they said, these five cows don't have any non-red hairs. They're totally red. Let's check it out. And also at the age of 10 months, they decided to ship them to Israel. Because after that age, you can't really, it's very, very incredibly difficult to ship them. Um, so they they managed to do it. And it actually, they had to bend a lot of rules. They came to Israel under the classification of pets. Because at that time, it was uh, against the law to bring in um, farm animals. Um, and I, I was there in the airport when they came off the plane. I guess waist high, not much more. Beautiful little animals. Um, and what was crazy was they were so friendly. They were so friendly. I don't know. I used to be a dairy farmer and cows run away. But these cows came to you. They were so friendly. They'd never been abused. They only had beautiful experiences with people. And that was a year and a half ago. So last week, there was a conference in Shiloh, in ancient Shiloh, where the tabernacle stood for 396 years. And it was a conference on a lot of the details of this, of, do, of performing this mitzvah today that needed to still be worked out. I mean, it's not just the red cow. Um, and it's also, it's a modern thing. When they shipped them over, they didn't have ear tags, so they needed to identify them. They put in chips, and they had to figure out a way to put in the chips without leaving a scar. This is a modern day thing that isn't written about in the Bible, but you have to figure it out. Um, so they had a lot of details that they wanted to discuss and work out. So they had a conference last week, and it was, I think, four or five hours just of discussion and working through the sources, um, trying to figure out what, how we're going to do this. It's not so simple. You not only need a kosher cow, you also need a kosher kohen. Um, the Jews have always been very, very meticulous about keeping the tradition of who in the community is a kohen, whose family was descended from biblical era. We know who they are. Every Jew knows which person in the community is a kohen. But the problem is they have to be ritually pure. They cannot have come close to dead bodies. So they these we're talking about people who have been very kohanim, who have been very meticulous about not going into cemeteries, um, home births, because hospitals have dead people in them. So um, a person who's never been in the hospital also has to be a minimum of 15 years old because we're talking about a full-grown cow uh, it's kind of, it's physically demanding to actually uh, do shrita, do slaughtering, which is a very large knife across the neck of the cow. It's very difficult. So they needed, and someone who would be spiritually up to the job. Uh, there's also the place. The place, the specific location is not on the Temple Mount. So it's absolutely shouldn't be controversial. It's on the Mount of Olives. And... The problem is the Mount of Olives is a lot of cemetery. And Kohanim, as we said, cannot go into a cemetery and come and walking over a grave would cause them to become ritually impure. In the days of the temple, they actually had a stone bridge um, going from the temple to the site. So they're going to have to build some form of uh, boardwalk, a, a, a small wooden bridge to take the Kohanim from the temple or from Jerusalem to uh, to the Mount of Olives. Um, that's another thing that has to be worked out. So there's a lot of details that have to be worked out. Um, you, have, you, have I, written a, you have written a series of articles about it in Israel uh, 365. I suggest uh, for those who are interested uh, in how these uh, red cows could uh, could arrive to Israel. That's a fascinating story. You've interviewed those Texan farmers, uh, and I will include the description of the video, the links to the articles, and I suggest for all our viewers to follow the Israel 365 news site, which is a, a, the current news from the biblical perspective. I really uh, do appreciate your work there. And uh, but as you have written about it, uh, there are uh, skepticism or even uh, fear about these proceedings. For which purpose could this uh, ritual be used? Uh, there has been uh, 
an American docu docu oh, film uh, about it with in in occurrences. Uh, Oh my gosh! You're being you're being kind to me. You're being kind to them. Explain, could you just explain the the, the reason uh, what could be used and what is the purpose of the Temple Institute and 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 for those uh, people who are about to uh, make this ritual? Okay, first of all, I want to emphasize. Yeah, you're you're being very kind to me. You're being very kind to the the documentary. They they the documentary went so far as to say the red heifer was a response to the Romans burning the temple. I'm like the book of numbers came way before the Romans. Um, it was full of inaccuracies. Um, a temp an altar has not been built. They show a photo of an altar. It is actually a model altar that is not kosher to be used in the temple. Um, and it stands in a city called Mitzpah, which is nowhere near the Mount of Olives. And also, the red heifer is not burned on an altar. It's burned on top of wood on the Mount of Olives. Um, that's the kind of inaccuracies we're talking about. Um, so there's a lot of that. And what is true is that in the 100-day anniversary of the of October 7th, the spokesman for Hamas uh, put out a video saying the reason why we attacked was because of the red heifers, that they bought, brought them and they want to build the temple. Hamas does not need, they didn't attack us because of the red heifers. They they wrote it in the charter. They want to murder every Jew on the planet. Um, they said that so the rest of the world would say, oh, you know, that's right. Those pesky Jews, those darn Jews, they caused it by bringing the red heifers over, which they clearly have no right to do. They wanted to blame Israel in some way. So they said, because we brought the heifers over, we were going to tear down Aqsa Mosque and rebuild the temple. First of all, they put up a picture, not of Aqsa Mosque, but the Dome of the Rock, which is the Gold Dome, not Aqsa Mosque. They, they, don't even, they can't even identify their own holy site, which isn't really holy. If we wanted to build the temple, we would have done it in 1967. The Temple Mount belongs to Israel. It's part of Israel. And we have it for all religions. To this day, we even allow the Muslims to go up, and they actually have more rights on the Temple Mount than Jews or Christians. The, the red heifer, even if we do it and have the ashes of the red heifer, it will not usher in the building of the temple. We don't need the red heifer to build the temple, and it does not require the temple. We're not trying to bring the Messiah. God doesn't do our bidding. We do God's bidding. God told us to do the red heifer, so we do it, no matter how difficult it is. Um, it's not an excuse to build the temple. It's not a precursor to building the temple. When it comes time to build the temple, we'll build the temple. What's going to be with Aqsa Mosque? I don't know. But no one's asking, hey, maybe it's not so nice that Al-Aqsa Mosque is built on top of the Jew the, the, the Dome of the Rock is built on top of the Jewish temple out of the materials of the Jewish temple. They stole from us. No one's saying that. Okay, No one is talking. The rabbis who are in charge of the red heifer are aware of these tensions. They're not calling to build the temple. They're saying we are not going to have to build the temple. But this is a Torah commandment that we are unbelievably blessed to be able to perform. And it will allow other things. It will allow the, the, the Jews to be pure, to be purified. That's an amazing thing. So it really has almost nothing to do with the temple. It will certainly not require us to build the temple. Um, and there's just so much fake news about this. The day of that conference, which was just a bunch of people coming around and learning, studying Bible, specifically about the red heifer, Hezbollah posted the invitation to the conference and said, oh, we have to stop this. Those Jews are going to are, are threatening Al-Aqsa, and we're not. So the opposition is not really to the red heifers. The opposition is just the same Jew hatred that's been around for two cent for two thousand years. Are these, Hezbollah are, and Hamas don't need an excuse. Are these red heifers be uh, protected 
I mean, you mentioned Hamas and Hezbollah threatening, uh, and they use terror uh, for all kinds of purposes. Uh, so I guess uh, they, they they should be protected. Um, they're as protected as the Jews in the community are. It's a community um, Shiloh in in uh, in Samaria in Shimron. Um, I spoke to the to two guys in charge of security. You don't want to mess with them. These are, <laughs> these are guys who have been in many wars. Okay, <laughs> they sleep with their guns. They. They eat with their guns. They play with their children with the guns, and they're relaxed, fine guys. But if there's if there's a problem, oh, they'll take care of it. Um, they're very they're very they're as protected as Jews are in Samaria. Um, thank God, thank God. They're, they're, to be honest, I'm one of the cows is I, I'm pretty sure was verified as no longer suitable. Because even though they're born perfectly red, they could sprout red hairs, they could develop a blemish, they could get a scar, cut themselves. So one of the absolutely not, and before they're before they're used, um, they have to be inspected, and that means going over the entire cow with a magnifying glass. I've seen it done; it's crazy. A full-grown cow, magnifying glass, just this rabbi going over the. I've never seen a cow who really enjoys that. So. Um, but this all has to be done. They're they're protected, God willing. Um, yeah, yeah. You mentioned so. you mentioned the cows should uh, be at least two years old. But is there an upper age limit for uh, being able to be slaughtered? You know, a lot of people have asked that. Um, to be really honest, I don't know the answer. I think one of the reasons I there are some questions that have never been asked. That's one of them because usually, but I, like I said, there are nine red heifers. Um, according to Jewish tradition, the tenth one will um, purify Israel to usher in the Messiah. Um, so it's to purify us for the final days. Um, no one has ever had to ask what is the upper limit, because for the nine red heifers that were in the times of the tabernacle and the temple. As soon as they were ready, they 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 did the ceremony and they burned them. Um, and there's even a tradition that um, the ashes from the old red heifer will will be mixed in with the ashes of the new red heifer. And we don't have any ashes of the old red heifer. So the question is, can we do that? We don't know. It's never been done before. Um, I mean, it's kind of like it's a what we call in English a catch twenty two. It's a problem. Do you need the old ashes to make the new ashes? Ashes. If you do, we've got a problem. So there, there's all these new questions. No one's ever asked if there's an upper limit. But um, as time goes on, the chances of the cows becoming unsuited um, grows greater. They can. It's, there's a greater chance of them growing hairs that are not red. There's a greater chance of them getting blemishes. Um, so there is an interest in doing it as soon as possible, though it's more important, I think, to do it right, to make sure that everything is perfectly correct. Once every 2,000 years, that's when we do the mitzvah. So it's got to be perfect. And who's the, who has the final word, final say in deciding when to do and what to do? The rabbis who have been running it for the past 12 or 15 years, Rav Azaria Ariel, Rav Menachem Makover, um, the other rabbis from the Temple Institute. The Temple Institute has been working for 40 years to teach people about the about the the, the third temple and the second temple and the first temple. And they've been working on it. They've been doing the research. It amazes me that people jump in and they think, well, I read the verses one or two times. No, this is a massive study. Rabbi Zari Ariel, he wrote a big authoritative book in Hebrew that I can't even understand. Um, about the particular halachas and what might be new about them. And and uh, and it's not so easy to understand. They've been doing it for a dozen years. Um, I think they're the final authority. Do you think uh, this will unify the Jewish people or on no. the opposite, rather divide them even um, more? Jews like to argue. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone knows that. Um, we actually make it into a good thing. That's actually how we study study uh, the Talmud, is we argue. 
Uh, so there's always going to be a lot of opinions. Um, there is, there are actually not so many Jews who are actively seeking to bring back the temple. I would say even most religious Jews, their ideal Judaism is what their grandfathers did in Europe. Um, and I think this will be a stage where Judaism, where Jews as a nation return to our roots in the land of Israel. It's going to be a massive change in Judaism. We're, we're going to return to our roots, to what we were. Um, and a lot of people don't want that. A lot of people don't want that. Um, look at the Jews who don't come to Israel. Israel's a huge thing, but they're fine where they are. Um, that's what they've decided. So this will cause some kind of division within the Jewish people. One thing I saw at the at, in Shiloh at the at the conference, which was very surprising, was there were a few, not many, um, Haredi Jews, the ones who wear black and have the funny hats and speak Yiddish. Um, that's also seen on the Temple Mount, where for the longest time it was what they call the religious Zionists. They're the ones who they'll wear the long fringes and they'll have the big, like this kind of big knitted kippah, um, but they don't wear black. Um, and they're very into, they're, they're, they believe very strongly in the connection between Jew, between Torah, the land of Israel, and the Jews. Um, the Haredim believe in Torah and not so much the land of Israel. Um, sometimes even not the land of Israel, against the land of Israel. If you go up to the Temple Mount now, you're seeing more and more of the black-dressed Haredi Jews, and there were a few at the conference. So the rabbis have not quite, the rabbis of the Haredi Jews have not quite shifted their viewpoint yet, but many of their followers have gone against the teachings of the rabbis and started doing that. Um, I think a big, uh, but in America, there are no religious Zionists. If they're religious Zionists, they live in Israel. I think it'll cause a division between the Haredim and the religious Zionists, and some of the Haredim are coming over to the side of the temple and the land of Israel. Um, it'll cause a bigger division between Israel and the exile, the exiled Jews. That's going to be a big division. Um, and we're going to have to deal with that. And concerning the Christians, uh, what do you think, uh, what is the message of the red heifers for Christians, if there is any? Okay. There have been a lot of Christians. I've hear, heard a lot of talk about the church of the, uh, the temple of the Antichrist. Um, how, how dare the Jews incite the Arabs. There's a lot of, um, of, uh, sentiment amongst the amongst the Christians against the the red heifer against the temple um I think it's based in anti-semitism I think it's based in replacement theology um this really has nothing to do with the Christians Christians do not become impure they do not need the ashes of the red heifer they also can't go up to the temple um I am supposed to serve as a Kohen, as a priest, as a, I am to serve the other nations. If they want to make a sacrifice, they bring it to me. I take it up to the Temple Mount and give it to the Kohen and say, here, this is for my friend Peter, who wants to celebrate having a, another grandchild. So he want, wants to bring a Thanksgiving offering. I can't do that if I'm impure. You don't need to do that because you're not going up to the Temple Mount. And you can't become impure. I am impure. So on one hand, it really means nothing for the Christians. And it's not really relevant to them. Um, I don't know about the, temp the Temple of the Antichrist. We don't have that. Our intention is it's a, it's a, it's a commandment written in the Torah, just like every other commandment. That's for us. Uh, it's like a, a Christian commenting on it is like you coming up to me and tell me, oh, this is kosher. Why are you telling me that? Or this is not kosher. Why are you telling me that? You don't keep kosher. This is my kosher. It's not your kosher. Um, on the other hand, um, the cows were provided by Christians who believe that their connection with, with the Torah is through the Jews, and they wanted to help us bring more Torah into the world, more Bible into the world. 
Um, so it's not so clear cut, but I think that's that's some of the sides of uh, of how it relates to Christians. It's really, really very exciting. And it is very. Uh, I want to emphasize, you couldn't. I look at this and I say we are about to enter a new era, a new time for all of mankind. We haven't seen a temple since <laughs> since Jesus walked the earth. We haven't seen a temple like that. Um, it's it's a totally new time. it will change everything. Okay, we look forward to that. And uh, thank you very much for explaining the latest developments uh, about the red heifers. Uh, and uh, we wish and bless Israel as always. And looking forward to have the uh, following up the news. So thank you, Elia Huberkovic Thanks. from Thanks uh, so much, Israel. Peter. I, I want to emphasize, if you're hearing things from other places, there's a lot of lies going around. Peter has always been on top of things. Um, and what's the truth and what's not the truth? There's so many lies about the red heifer. Before you come to any conclusions, you should really investigate it and, and, and get it from good sources. Sure, that's what we are about to do. So thank you very much and have a blessed day. Thank you, Eliyahu. Thank you, thank you Peter.